it's Samantha from Scrap Masters Paradise, and today I want to show you a little tutorial on using the Rain Boots stamp set. This is one of our oldie stamp sets. It comes with rain boots, a bunch of sentiments, and little decorations so you can decorate the rain boots. So I'm going to show you a reverse masking technique so that you can decorate your rain boots um, and using the SVG cut file. I just cut this out with my software and my electronic die cutter. So let's get started. I've got my die cut here. I've got Memento ink because I'm going to be using my Copics. I'm just going to ink up the stamp and I got some on myself. Okay. Then I'm going to just try to line this up the best I can because I'm on camera. It's a little bit difficult. See? See, I'm pretty lined up. It's a little bit off center from the top to the bottom. The bottom's a little bit shorter than that big border on the top. But I'm going to keep it because it's, it's still pretty nice. I'm also going to stamp the same thing again on my scrap paper here. This is just some scrap paper I've had. I use it under my Copics and under when I'm inking up things. It gets all grungy. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to cut out on the lines using my X-Acto knife. First, let me cut this one piece off. I don't want to lose my little rain boots. Okay, so I've got my X-Acto knife. I'm just going to trim right on these lines. I don't want to leave any white around the image. This is going to become my mask. Okay. So when I've cut it all out, I'm left with two pieces. This piece can be used as a mask if I were to have this on a whole white piece of paper and if I wanted to just airbrush or ink around it, I could use this piece. But for today's project, I want this piece because I want to just have my boots showing through and I want the sides to be masked off when I'm using my little star stamp to make a pattern on the boots. So I'll just stamp, stamp, stamp this little pattern. So that's the mask that I want to use for this project. Before we get to our masking part, I want to go ahead and color these boots in. Oops, I guess I need my scrap paper so my Copics don't bleed. And I'm going to use blue for the main part of the boot and then gray for the um, little edges. So I've got B52, B41, and C5 and C7. I'm going to start with the 52, and this one's a little bit darker than the B41, so I'm just going to use it around the edges here. Make sure I'm still on camera. I'm sorry, my lighting in this room is just really awful, so you get the shadows when I'm coloring. This is the best place I could actually be in this room though. Okay. And now I'm just going to go in with the B41. Smooth those lines out a little bit. I'm just going in a circular motion to smooth those lines. And then blending it all. And I'm not going to do very um, intense shading here. I just have a little bit of the darker around the edge because I want my main um, aspect of this. The main aspect is those little cute stars. So I don't need to have my Copic coloring be amazing on this project. 
which is very simple. Okay, so you can see this side of the boot's darker than this side. And I'm going to do the same thing with this other one, starting with the B52. And I'm going to shade along the same side as this other boot. That so looks like the light is coming from this direction, and the darker parts on the opposite side where the light's coming in. get to play with your light sources. And right here, um, this other shoe is in front, so I'm going to just do a teeny bit of darker shading right where maybe it would be up against it and there would be some sort of shadow left by that other boot. But the thing is you can play with um, your light source and choose wherever you want your light source to be. Alright, I think that's pretty Pretty nice. Go through one more time and do a little bit of blending. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So now I'm going to go in and just do the rubber parts. I'm going to start with my C7, which is the darker one, and put the darkest parts the same places where I put the darker parts of the boot part. Okay. Same thing for this one. I'm going to put some more of the dark up against this heel since the other shoe is blocking it. That way we're left with some shadowy part. And then same on this side, there would be more shadow again. So there's my Copic coloring. Pretty simple. Just two different colors, a lighter and a darker. I blended it all together. So now I'm going to need my mask, which I set over here. I think um, what you could do is you could tape both of these down or use some sort of temporary adhesive to hold these down. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it with my hands while I stamp with the other hand. But first got to get my ink. And I want to do the polka dots in a, a darker color, looking through the colors I have on my table. Let's see. Maybe a green would be pretty. Or a purple. I didn't bring very many colors with me. I'm going to use Wisteria Wonder, which is a purple, so we'll see how that looks. I'm just going to line these up the best I can and hold it down. Move it so you guys can see a little bit better. I'm just trying to line it up perfectly here. And stamp my little stars. Oh yeah, that looks good. It looks kind of like a darker blue. moved my mask. Okay. Just inking them up. I gotta move where my fingers are. 
I didn't bring a smaller block. I actually do have a, a smaller block for smaller stamps like this. Let's get my thing lined back up. But I just brought this medium one. Okay, so when you take off your mask, then your white is still left around the edges because you blocked off where the stamps came up around the image. So, there are my boots, so I'm going to gather the rest of my card pieces and come right back. Okay, so I picked out some pieces here to finish off my card. I've got this piece of paper. It is from the... Um, Vanity Fair 6x6 paper pad by my mind's eye. And I just cut it um, 3 inches this way and then 3.25 inches this way. And rounded two of the corners. I'm going to stick my image on this on my card. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to polka dot this background. Actually, we have to turn this so that we get all of our um, mat covered up here. So I've got this bashful blue cardstock and the large polka dot background stamp by SP and Company. And I just want a subtle polka dot, so I'm going to use Versamark ink. Um, it comes like this. It's just, um, it's called watermark ink, but it um, just kind of turns a darker version of whatever color you're stamping on. This is also the ink I love to use for embossing because it stays a little bit wet. I'm just going to try to line these up. Okay, so you get this really subtle looking polka dot. And as it dries, it gets a teeny bit darker. I'm just going to repeat this over and over across my whole... Oops. I'm just going to repeat this over and over until I cover the whole front of the card. You just have to line up the polka dots. Let's see, let's do it like this. Oops, <laughs> my paper came with me. Well, this background is designed so that you can do repeated patterns like this. And then you can just line them up at the bottom. Trying to make sure I line it up. It's hard to do with the camera in the way. Okay, and I need a teeny bit more across that top part. I'm going to ink it up one more time. Okay. So they ended up getting a little bit darker here at the bottom, and they'll just get darker as they dry along this top part, too. I think I'm going to put a ribbon on here. I've got some brown ribbon. This is Paper Tray Inks chocolate ribbon. Let's put a big bow on here. need a little bit more on this side. The thing about their satin ribbon is one side is the satiny ribbon and then one side um, doesn't have that same sheen on it. So that means um, part of my bow has the the more matte whereas some of it is really shiny. You can see the difference just on the camera there. I still think it's really pretty. I wish they had double faced satin ribbon. 
so that it would all look really shiny. But it's still cute. I've got my little bow here. Let's move it down. So my image is going to go here towards the top so I can stamp my sentiment underneath. I think I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment and then I can position my image exactly where I want it. Just got some Memento Cocoa ink. I'm going to just stamp it here. It just says, you're my sunshine. It looks a little bit crooked, but that's okay. with that crooked sentiment. So I think I'm going to use one of my SVGs to cover it up. And actually this is the right one. I, I got lucky when I grabbed it. So I'm going to stamp it on here and try to cover up where I put that crooked sentiment. Let's see if I can line this up. Okay. I'm just going to cover it up if I can. Oh yeah, I can cover it. That's good because that would have really annoyed me. Okay, see? You can always fix mistakes. Then my little boots. And we're done. So there's my little card. I've got my little boots and I showed you the reverse masking technique. And I even showed you a way to cover up a boo-boo. Oh, well, thanks for watching. Bye.